them suited up and we get on the road. This area right here is the hot triage section where we have physicians and nurses and medics that are going to sit down, evaluate them, see if there's any medical needs that they have. Once they pass them through that, they move over here to our login station. All we're doing is going in and taking their name if we have it. If we don't have it, if they're not ambulatory, they can't speak, they can't move. We then tag them, we give them a number, and we move them through the line. We have three lines that are set up right now. This is our ambulatory line. That is our non-ambulatory line with the rollers. And then the third one over is our tech decon. So anybody who is uh, actually down here um, on, the, on the military side that's a responder, they have a dedicated line for themselves so they're not holding up any patients and so that there aren't any patients holding up our guys because they have to rotate in and out fairly fast, uh, otherwise our responders start going down. This is our ambulatory tent. It's broken up into two sections. The right side is for males. The left side is for females. This is the decon tent. As you can see, we have water flowing uh, in here. Um, the nozzles, some of them are on, some of them are off. As we bring people in here, we make sure that uh, and instruct them to turn on the nozzles so they're getting the full shower effect. We try and turn them down when we don't have many people going through so that we're not pumping more water into the waste area. Uh, the material that we use to clean with is completely dependent upon the contamination. If it's, ra if it's radiation, alpha, beta particles, we use hot soapy water uh, to get all the particles off the body. If it's a, a, a nerve agent, a blister agent, we have different uh, cleaning agents that we use to be applied to get that off of the body. The non-ambulatory line is the same principle as the ambulatory, only the non-ambulatory, these patients either can't walk or they cannot take care of themselves. So we go through the, the, the exact same sequence as we do for ambulatory. All they do, as you can see right there with the roller that they have, they just have to move them down the line. They'll run them through decon. We will have somebody that will actually spray them down uh, with the correct uh, material to decon the patients to get them clean. They will go straight into the medical tent because these guys who are non-ambulatory obviously ha have, they need medical treatment as soon as possible. Uh, so they'll run down through on the, uh, by the litter team and go into medical section and the medical section takes over from there. Uh, over the last uh, little over an hour, we processed over 50 uh, patients um, in that time frame. We could process more. What we would, would actually be able to do um, is uh, 75 bodies per line per hour. Well, the goal is to be uh, within a, um, three to six hours, you know, basically on the road. And so we have all of our trailers uh, located up in St. Joe, Missouri, uh, with the uh, trucks to pull them. And uh, the goal is to try to marry up people coming in from not only around Missouri, but I'm from Illinois, and we have people from Kansas and other states that would have to come in and meet at an assembly point and then get hooked up with the team and the equipment. My role in SURF-P is, as the full-time medical ops officer, is to plan the training for the medical element in conjunction with the Army. SURF-P is a joint um, exercise, a joint team with, with Army and AIR. And so my job is to work with the Army on the full-time basis for planning, tracking of training, and also to be that liaison to our traditional members when they would be called in. The SURF-P team is made of four elements. It's made of a search and extraction element, it's made of a command and control element, and it's made of a decon element. As the medical element, what we bring to that is, like I said earlier, the nurses, the doctors. We also have 10 medics that are um, trained to go down into the hot zone with search and extraction so that they can render immediate care and triage out to come through the decon if we were do, um, in that type of a situation. We can also be called separate, so if the state would need our asset, they can call just the medical. Say we had a natural disaster where they don't really need a decon element, they can just pick that medical element and we can respond to that. As can all the other units, they can respond separately as well as we can respond all together. We are that initial um, band-aid for the treatment before they would go out. We don't do surgery, we do very life-saving skills protecting airway, breathing, and circulation. 
and then we would send them out into the local community through the incident commander. Over here they will come in, they will roll up and we will go, the first place they will go is to the cold triage and once they're in the cold triage area our nurses and doctors and providers will re-triage their uh, medical condition to make sure that they haven't gotten any worse, to make sure everything's okay with them and then they will put them into the tents that they belong in and in the red tent um, the, the providers and nurses and medics will give them the treatment that they need as fast as they can. This is the acute tent. This is where we do all the emergencies here. We have um, all kinds of equipment, medical equipment. We have ventilators to assist the providers if we need a ventilator, a patient on a ventilator, suction machines. We have IV pumps to, to put IVs in patients to rehydrate them or to give them medications. Our pharmacy is in here so um, the providers can get the medications for the patients that they need. They need antidotes, they would give them here. The um, non-critical tent, where our walking wounded, broken arms, if they had um, just cuts and bruises, if they need medical attention, they will come into this tent and they, we can do sutures and um, bandaging and splinting. We also have medical equipment in here to do IVs and everything. And, um, airways if the patient gets worse while they're in this tent. Once the patient leaves this area, we will go over to the holding area where we will have contact with the C2. Once they're in this tent and they've been, we've uh, up-channeled it to the C2 to where the patients need to go, the ambulances, the, the helicopters, then they would bring them out the back of this tent onto the ambulances or take them to the landing zone for the helicopters to land and then we would be done caring for the patients. Well, there are about 12 states in the central states areas that we have compacts with that, that we could provide uh, services. And of course, I mean, obviously we would go anywhere that the uh, National Command Authority or the president uh, uh, would ask us uh, to be if it was a major disaster in, uh, in the southeast or in New York or out on the west coast. We'd be available to go anywhere, but we're mainly training to be available in, in, the, in the Midwestern states immediately. Th this is uh, just a, a great example of the jointness and again, seamlessness working through the Guard. Uh, Air Guard and uh, Army Guard work well together. They each bring something different to the fight, and we need to take advantage of that in a joint operational Mode. I thought the soldiers and airmen worked very well together. Air Guard, uh, very professional, very squared away. Uh, did their set up in about 33 minutes, so uh, fantastic job. He thought went very well. Uh, a lot of good training out there, a lot of hard work from uh, all soldiers and airmen, and uh, the recommendation will be uh, to be validated, uh, and uh, that will go up to the tag, and hopefully he'll uh, uh, agree with that validation and the metrics we provide him, and he'll validate the uh, Missouri Surf Team. Our citizens know that if there is a disaster or response that uh, local governments can't deal with, that's what the National Guard, Army, and Air are here to do.